Hey, welcome back to the Fit Survive channel. So what we have here today is a trauma kit from Everlit Survival. And so this is a ready-made trauma kit from them. So I did not pack this, but we're gonna go through and say a bit about this and I'll show you what's inside and then we'll go from there. All right, so this is kind of what I would consider uh, between medium to large as far as for a trauma kit. I know you can get like an entire backpack size, but this is still something that you could still per se wear on your belt. And the back here you have uh, these snaps, so you can easily attach this to your belt. It can easily be attached to a backpack that has the Molly system. Um, and the cool thing about this is this back section right here that connects to your belt or to your backpack can easily be removed in case of an emergency. And so what happens is, let's say you need this really quick, you snap off this buckle, and then you pull off this from the, the red handle. You'd pull it, and it comes off with this Velcro. All right, so about like that. And so what that does is it makes it uh, easily accessible. And so if this is on your backpack or wherever else, uh, then you can easily remove it and take it to uh, the, the, the location where it's needed. All right, so I like that about this pack. Like I said, it's kind of kind of medium sized. You could easily fit in a backpack. You can attach it to a backpack. And I'll go ahead and give you the dimensions of this. So it was right about seven inches wide and right about like nine inches tall. I like that it comes with the first aid patch there and you got this um, kind of dark gray American flag style patch. And also it's really cool that they have all the handles, all these um, the zippers and everything, they're all in red, which kind of is a giveaway uh, that this is a medical kit. All right, and so this kit does come in a couple different colors. So it comes with this one, which is kind of like a, I don't know, kind of tan maybe. Then it has the OD green. And so the cool thing about them doing different colors is if you want to match it up to your current gear, that's easy to do. Also, I forgot to mention, it's got these uh, interesting like molly on the front, or if you wanted to attach something else in the front, that could easily be done. So it's got these two colors, and then there's two more. You have this camouflage color. And something I noticed about this pack, this uh, camo one, is that the bag is just slightly smaller, you can see there, than this one. But the contents in all these bags are the same. It's the exact same advanced trauma kit. Um, it's just some different color variations that they have. And it also comes in tactical black. All right, so like I said already, all these packs that I just showed you, all four of these, uh, they, they are the exact same trauma kit. And so it's gonna have the exact same contents in them. It's just some different uh, variations of the color. Like I said, just simply lets you uh, choose between whichever works best for you. All right, but since they're all the exact same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just open up one of them and I'll show you the contents of it and kind of explain a bit of that. All right, so once again, keep in mind, this is not a kit that I've put together. This is a ready-made kit from Aerolit. Now, I would recommend uh, adding some more medical equipment to this. But this would be a good, kind of like foundation per se. So if you were trying to put together your own trauma kit, this would be great. Uh, it's got all the basics, and then you can add whatever you wanted to add to there. Allergy medicine, uh, some other band-aids and stuff. But let's go ahead and we'll go through. I'll show you what it has. All right, so right up top, uh, we have, basically this is a tourniquet. And so it's kind of your standard, what you'd expect. Um, really simple tourniquet. All right, so it has some simple instructions here on how to use that, but you definitely want to know how to use it before you need to use it. So anyways, um, I like the way they have that folded. It's kind of an intelligent way to have it folded. So anyways, uh, if you don't know how to use a tourniquet, I definitely recommend getting some experience with that because you're gonna to want to know how to use it before you need to use it. And actually, right now is a good moment to say, uh, buying a trauma kit doesn't make you a medic, okay? It doesn't make you a first responder. Um, you need to have the gear and the knowledge. And so I'd highly recommend going to like Red Cross. Um, I know they have uh, some online courses that then you finish up with an with a actual instructor. And so you can get some first aid, you can get CPR, AED, all those kind of certifications. And then that knowledge plus the equipment, that is what's gonna save lives. All right, so you have the tourniquet there. And a tourniquet is a really extreme um, kind of medical equipment there, in my opinion. 
Uh, it's kind of dangerous, but anyways, let's not get into that. All right, so you have some examination gloves here. So, of course, naturally, anytime you're dealing with somebody else's blood, you're gonna want some of your own protection. And I see there are two sets, which that is brilliant because it either gives you a backup set in case you get one set all bloody, um, or if you have somebody helping you, which is always a good idea, then that's one set for you and one set for your buddy. All right, so I like that they had uh, two pairs of the medical gloves there. All right, so an interesting piece of equipment they have here. This is the nasopharyngeal airway. All right, so what this tube is, is basically it is um, meant to basically open up the airway, but instead of going through um, the mouth, you're going in through the nostril. All right, and so it's a, it's a really soft rubber piece here. And so right here next to it, you have this lubricating jelly. And so you basically you dip this in there and you would insert this through the nostril and that's gonna provide the airway needed, which is important uh, naturally. Um, so yeah, basically important piece of medical equipment there. Um, usually these come in a bunch of different sizes depending on um, the size of your uh, person you're treating. But yeah, this is just a single size here. And again, if you don't have any um, any qualification to use it, you know, it, you can actually hurt somebody trying to use it without knowing how to use it. So again, I can't say it enough. Be sure to get training on all of your first aid and emergency gear. All right, so it also comes with this Sharpie style mini marker. And so what this is actually gonna be for is when you apply a tourniquet, you also need to write down the time that it was applied. And so it's good that they included the marker here. And so you can write down that way, uh, you know how long the tourniquet has been applied because if you leave it on too long, you're gonna end up causing more trouble than you ended up really helping. All right, and moving on here. So we have, these are chest seals. And so this is for, again, uh, like a chest wound, um, but more, specific, more specifically, a sucking chest wound. And so these are generally used for gunshot wounds. So if someone gets shot in the chest and their wound is sucking air, um, it can cause a lot more trouble. And so what this does is, go ahead and open this up. What this is, is it's just a really sticky like bandage per se. And it's just to stop the air from sucking into uh, your chest cavity. And the reason why they have two is in case the bullet went through the chest, you have a front and a back. And so you need to apply to both sides of the wound. All right, and a big red label here, as you know, you peel this off. And as you see, it's just basically a really large and you'll see very sticky, um, yeah, just a big circle there. It's nice, it's transparent also, because that way you can see exactly what where you're aiming <laughs> to hit that uh, chest wound. All right, so you see that it's super sticky. All right. And the reason why it's so sticky is because you're gonna have blood, you're gonna have hair on the chest perhaps, uh, maybe sweat and all kinds of stuff. And so you want this to be as sticky as possible. So really interesting, um, really interesting and also really good. And you'll notice a lot of the, of the items that are moving out of this kit are gonna be their very own uh, made. You see Everlet Survival. So this kit is from Everlet Survival and this is also their made um, chest seal. All right, then it comes with a, uh, with some shears. And this is important for uh, cutting at jeans or clothes because you need to be able to get to the wound, to treat the wound. And so it's easier to cut off clothes than to try to remove them or pull them off or whatever else. All right, they have in here, basically their warranty card, which is interesting. But anyways, it's from them. All right, and lastly in this large compartment, is a large, uh, this is what I would call a SAM splint. And so this is basically meant to, to work as a splint for um, a broken arm, broken leg. You notice here, I'll oh, take this off and you'll see a little better. I like that they did some uh, instructions. All right, right there. So you can see they have some instructions for how to apply this to your arm, to a finger, to your wrist, your foot, your neck and so on, and they also have some more 
uh, explanations how to make it stronger with a C curve uh, or with the reserve, uh, reverse curve, T curve, and stuff like that. So anyways, that's really good um, that they have all that instructions on there. And so basically all it is, is it's kind of like aluminum, a metal on the inside that is going to give it the structure. But on the, inside, on the outside, it has like this soft, uh, foamy coating. And what that's going to do is provide some comfort, but at the same time, you can still you can conform it around a broken arm, or as I said, in any other places. And so this is a 36 inch one. And you see, well, I guess you can't really see, not much space, but anyways, plenty of, plenty of it there to get it around whatever section you need. All right, so that is the, the splint. All right, that's everything for the front compartment. And now I didn't, I wouldn't say that this pack is like uh, filled out. And so there's still plenty of space, uh, still plenty of space to add some extra things that you might need. All right, so this is what they are calling a uh, compression, an emergency compression bandage. This is what I would call an is Israeli bandage. But of course it's not made in Israel. This actual particular one is made in China. But it's the exact same concept as the Israeli bandage. All right, so it actually has double vacuum pack there. So what this is for is for a uh, large bleed also. And so you have this large non-absorbent pad right here. And so what you do is you would apply this uh, right to where your bleed, where the bleed is. And then this goes around, let's see if I can do this to myself. This goes around like this. All right, and what you do is you'd go in through this little plastic piece. And then you would go back. And so right here, the plastic piece is right below is also where that uh, non adhesive uh, bandages. And so, yeah, this is kind of hard to do single handedly. What you do is you go backwards with this and it applies pressure to that exact location. And this is spinning on me. And then basically you'd go around um, as many times as you needed. And then you actually uh, go back and snag it um, again underneath this little Y plastic section here. So anyways, that's another, it's an important, um, important thing to carry because it does, it does really well for stopping bleeds and it doesn't apply as much pressure as a tourniquet. So it's not going to stop blood uh, flow to your lower extremities, but at the same time, it will apply pressure uh, to the wound to kind of help stop a serious bleed. All right. So that is their um, compression bandage. All right, then you have standard elastic bandage. This is what you'd expect for most, uh, like maybe a sprain or whatever else you need to apply. Um, and so just your typical, I don't think this really needs to be demonstrated. Basically it's your stretch bandage. And so you can apply this on there to wherever you need to apply it, whether it be to hold um, like some gauze down or another bandage down. Then you have these little clips just to hold that in place. And then next in here, this is their compressed gauze. It is Z-folded. And so the Z-fold is usually used for packing a wound. And so if you have um, like a serious cut that you need to pack, that's what this is good for, is for actually pulling this and shoving it into the wounded section. So you can see we get this going here. Wow, it's really vacuumed down. All right, interesting the way it came undone there. Anyways, so what you do is you would use this and basically if you had a wound, you would just start, uh, basically start just packing that into the wound, you know, as much as you could. Uh, and that's gonna stop that bleed. And you see, once we get this all pulled out, that's actually, that's actually a whole lot of gauze. Whereas being vacuumed down, it took up just a small little bit of space. So anyways, that was their, their vacuumed gauze. They have an abdominal pad, kind of a smaller size one. So you to open this up, I'll show you what this is. All 
All right, so just a pad like this, again, just be something um, for applying to a wound. And this is fairly large. All right, and then we have some more of your different bandages and some other small things here. Just a little Ziploc. So your standard Band-Aid. Um, and this is basically looks like an off-brand Band-Aid. Let's go ahead and look at one and see if it's any good. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right, let's try this right here. All right, actually, that is a really thin Band-Aid right here along this uh, sticky section. It's really thin, it doesn't stick up. You can see when I move my hand, some of the cheaper, like really cheap Band-Aids that are like really plasticky, if it's in a section of your, of your hand where you bend, then it pops off. This doesn't, this actually sticks like super well. Good, all right. So the Band-Aids are actually much better than I expected them to be. Um, since I didn't recognize this brand, who knows, it might be brand, brand named. All right, then you have an adhesive wound dressing here. And so again, just for a smaller wound, this one's gonna have its own sticky pad here. Yeah. Walking up to the rescue. All right, so like I said, for a much smaller uh, wound, you'd use this, and it's got its own stickiness around it. And so that's going to do basically a really good job of just staying right where it's supposed to stay. And you don't need to apply any tape or anything else to that. It's got itself covered. All right, and there are a couple of those. So there were two. And then what are these? Okay, these are knuckle band-aids. You see that kind of, yeah, kind of hard to see right now. These are the knuckle band-aids. And then these are also uh, some different band-aids also. So all three of these, are band-aids, but just different uh, shapes, to dip just depending on where you're applying them. All right, then you have some small um, gauze swabs, and this is literally gonna be just a small amount of gauze uh, meant for cleaning a, sec uh, cleaning a wound, or whatever else, uh, so make sure you got a little bit of gauze there. All right, so you can see, literally just a small, small, small amount all right, and then the last thing on the back there is you have some antiseptic wipes. Uh, antiseptic wipes. All right, then you have an emergency thermal blanket. So this is a Mylar blanket. And so they're really thin, but they do really well uh, for retaining heat and stuff. They're also highly reflective. And so if you're trying to attract attention uh, to wherever you are, these are really good for that. These are good for, again, if you're cold, uh, if you're trying to set up a small little uh, shelter is are good for when you have like somebody a patient going into shock and stuff you can cover them up uh, put them into the recovery position all right that's all for there we have some standard uh, medical tape again I don't think that needs to be explained it's kind of self self-explanatory kind of obvious there I right, then a whole bunch of um, alcohol prep pads this will be good for getting things sterile getting things ready because the last thing you want, uh, any kind of wound, is gonna be an infection. And so that's gonna help you uh, get things cleaned up and so you don't have to worry about the infection later on. All right, and then the last compartment here, let me go ahead and show you this, is actually detachable. There you go, so you see this opening section. And so if you wanted, you could completely remove that, like that, see how it pulls off, It'll be attached to that Velcro. And the entire back section here is empty. So again, like I said, uh, plenty of space here for expanding this pack to make it more suitable to your needs, uh, to what you're gonna want. And so let's go ahead and take these last few items out of here. And I will set the pack over here to the side. All right, so, and here you have a triangular bandage. And again, I like that they have some explanations of how this can be used um, so in case you don't know what you want to do with this, <laughs> it's, uh, often these are used for slings. And so if somebody broke their arm, you splinted it, 
but you want to kind of have it elevated uh, above their heart or so it's not going to be hanging, but they're just uh, supported by this. You can use for that or for any other times that you need to just wrap um, around the head, around the arm or wherever else. It's just going to be a really large um, kind of bandage like that. So like I said, I like that they have some explanation to that. All right, and then you have kind of a medium-sized uh, dressing here. And let me pull this open. All right, and so once again, um, it's gonna be very similar to the triangular bandage, except this is gonna be a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller. And so a bunch of different universal uses uh, for that. All right, so that is everything that was in this trauma kit. It's gonna cover uh, the basics. You're not gonna see any pills in here. There's no painkillers. Um, there's nothing for like for allergies or things like that. And so if those are things you wanted to add in here to make this a, a complete like um, first aid kit, there's plenty of space in the kit, I mean in this pack, to still add some more stuff to this, adding pills and so on. But this is just the basics. It's only the skeleton per se. And so overall, I'm very impressed with everything they have included in this kit. And so this kit costs $120, um, as it is with everything that you see here, um, except for the couple things that we <laughs> applied and tossed. So anyways, um, be sure to check that out if you're wanting to get um, a nice like, first aid kit together for yourself. And again, I can't emphasize it enough. Be sure to get training. Uh, just having this gear, buying this kit, won't make you a medic. It's not gonna uh, it's not gonna help you out that much. You need to get some good first aid training, uh, get CPR training, AED, all that kind of stuff. Uh, learn how to use these items. Otherwise, if you don't if you don't know how to use it, then basically it's just wasted space. So, anyways, let me know what you think about this kit, about what they uh, chose to add, maybe about the pack itself. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out Everlit Survival. I'll include a link in the description of the video. So be sure to go check this out. They have a bunch of other stuff also. They have some 72-hour uh, kits. Um, they have some smaller first aid kits. So a bunch of interesting stuff. And so definitely check them out. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.